I've heard some say that I'm being too harsh on The Mandalorian. I would argue and say that people are being way too lenient with The Mandalorian. So I'm just going to clear the air here just so it doesn't look like that I'm having some kind of personal bias against this show. To be clear, I'm not necessarily saying that it's horrible. I'm simply saying that it's mediocre for the most part, and there's nothing story-wise that keeps me interested in wanting more. Now, is it fun at times? Sure, you could definitely say that. But I hear people say that so much about modern entertainment. They're always saying, well, it's fun. But I think there's a serious disconnect going on here because just because something is fun doesn't necessarily mean that it's good. I can have fun watching certain movies, but I can also recognize that they're not very good and that there's things in them that could be done a lot better. Most of the time, those movies are called guilty pleasures. And again, I'm not saying that The Mandalorian is guilty pleasure bad. I'm simply using that argument to create a correlation here to try to get my point across as it pertains to how this show is viewed. Entertainment is absolutely 100% subjective, and I totally understand that. What I find good, other people necessarily aren't going to and vice versa. But there are certain things that are just undeniable. Sometimes things aren't well written, sometimes things aren't well acted, and it's very obvious and easy to tell when that is. You can like those things anyway and that's fine, but you should also be able to admit that they could be better in certain areas. And that's really all I'm saying. As far as this episode goes, Unfortunately, it was more of the same, at least coming from my perspective. I'm just struggling to figure out exactly what the identity of this show is, and what exactly I'm supposed to care about. I guess it's the relationship between Mando and the child, and I guess you could say they have a cute relationship, but where exactly is it going? What are we trying to accomplish? That I'm not so sure. I understand he's taking him from point A to point B, and there's stops in between, a lot of stops apparently, but to have a good story you need more than a start and an end point. You need something in the middle for us to sink our teeth into, and I think that's what this show is missing. Because thus far, all I'm seeing is random adventures with no sign of a bigger purpose. But I digress. Here are my thoughts on The Mandalorian Chapter 10. The episode starts with an ambush on Mando. He eventually gets out of it, but his speeder was destroyed, so he basically has to walk his way back to civilization through the deserts of Tatooine. Mando then sets up a deal to transport a contact who is carrying unfertilized embryos and needs them transferred to a planet that may or may not have Mandalorians on it. So again, it's basically just another problem for Mando to solve, while trying to reach a goal himself of finding more Mandalorians. One caveat being is they can't travel by light speed, which is dangerous for someone who has a bounty on his head. So there's that also. The child is infatuated with the embryos and eats them anytime anyone isn't looking. They're eventually confronted by X-Wing pilots who are essentially regulating some kind of airspace. And there's mention again of a new Republic, which is something that I said I wish they would expand upon a little bit more, and maybe they will as the seasons go on. It just kind of gives you a sense of what's going on in the world. What happened after the Empire fell? How did we get from that to the First Order. All those questions could really be answered in The Mandalorian, but it seems like it's just kind of background noise at this point. And I'm not really sure if they're going to expand upon it, but we'll see. Hopefully they do, because I think that could be really interesting. I was on Twitter and some people took issue with Mando using the phrase, may the force be with you, simply because he doesn't seem to have much knowledge of Jedi or who they are, or what they stand for. And for him to use that phrase would seem to contradict that. And this is one instance where I'm actually going to defend The Mandalorian. So here, you can't say I'm just hating on it. Even if you go back to the original trilogy, people were using it as a kind of greeting or a kind of farewell and basically saying good luck on your adventure. It wasn't only used by Jedi. So I thought that argument was kind of silly, especially when I saw it in the context of the show, and it didn't really bother me as much as it did other people. After a brief chase with the X-Wings, Mando crash lands on an ice planet. I don't know if they specified what planet it was, but it is very reminiscent of Hoth. While Mando is attempting to repair the ship, the passenger with the embryos basically disappears, and Mando and the child have to go after it. They find it in this grotto-like area, and basically the passenger is bathing and has the embryos all floating in the water with him, and the child finds these eggs within the cave to eat instead. It turns out these are the eggs of a giant ice spider who appears while all the little hatchlings hatch and the chase is on. Mando kills the initial giant spider but is confronted later on 
when they take refuge inside the cockpit and try to take off by another giant spider that jumps on top of the ship. So as the ship is being swarmed by big and little spiders, they are saved by the two X-Wing pilots who are questioning them earlier in the episode. This whole sequence is very reminiscent of some sci-fi horror type movies that you might have seen in the past. It was cool visually, but it didn't really bring anything new to the table in my personal opinion. I just thought it was kind of standard in that aspect. So because of Mando's past good deeds, he earns a pass with the X-Wing pilots and they choose not to arrest him. So Mando repairs the cockpit enough to take off and the show ends with them flying off into space with no real resolution to this adventure. So I guess if I could say there's one thing happening here it is that it's not resolved by the end of the episode like a typical adventure of the week it has been. It is carrying over into the next episode now so it's kind of a break in the formula I guess you could say. I'm really scrounging for positive things to talk about here but I'm doing my best. My biggest takeaway from this episode is there was nothing of real consequence and that's become kind of a reoccurring issue with the show. But I'm sure the praise will come anyway because of the low standards that we're setting. If we could raise those standards ever so slightly, we might be able to squeeze out something quality from Disney Star Wars. But I don't know that that's ever going to happen because it seems like people are satisfied with the show just the way it is. So did you see Chapter 10? Let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time right here on Real Shift. Thanks for watching. Peace out.